Good afternoon, uh, or good noon, wherever you're joining from. Uh, great to have you here on the National Hypertension Control Initiative. This is a webinar for primary care associations. Just a couple of housekeeping items before the stars of the show kick in here, and that is that we are turning on the accessibility features. So we are using the closed captioning capability. You do have all sorts of controls over this using that CC or live transcript uh, button at the bottom of Zoom. Gives you the ability to either change its size, turn it off, or even pop it out for an ongoing running transcript. With that, we also just want to cover a couple other quick things. Using the Q&A button to submit questions, please. It's the best place for us to kind of capture and curate questions. You also have the ability to upvote. So you have the, uh, you're going to see all the questions people are asking. Give a thumbs up to a question that you really want to bubble to the top to be answered so that we can make sure to keep track of that. Meanwhile, use the chat button for watching for resource links in chat or offering up your comments, your experiences. Uh, it's a great place to have some great engagement. Please just make sure questions are coming in via Q&A. A recording is being made of the webinar and will be made available afterwards. With that, I'd like to turn it over uh, for welcome and opening remarks to uh, Phil Gipoko, who is a Senior Public Health Program Manager with the initiative. Phil. Thank you so much, John. Welcome. And I hope everyone's having a great Hispanic Heritage Month. I'm Phil Mendez Gipoko, Senior Public Health Program Manager for the National Hypertension Control Initiative at the American Heart Association. And I am based in Chicago, Illinois. This webinar is being recorded and a copy of the webinar will be sent to the registered emails to today's event. We're delighted that you've joined us for the second National Hypertension Control Initiative's Primary Care Association webinar. And even more thrilled to have the opportunity to work with you to reduce and manage blood pressure levels in our community. A recording of our first webinar can be found at the AHA NHCA website at www.heart.org slash hbpcontrol. And that link will be shared in the chat. Uh, this webinar is intended to provide program updates and discuss continued collaboration efforts between the primary care associations and other primary care support organizations and the National Hypertension Control Initiative. The NHCI is funded through the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, Office of Minority Health, and the Health Resource and Service Administration Bureau of Primary Health Care. Today, we'll provide an overview to the American Heart Association's NHCI updates, team rosters, and efforts. We'll dig a little deeper uh, into our primary care associations and the NHCI uh, collaboration opportunities that we have. We're going to highlight the Community Health Center Association of Mississippi. And we'll share some updates from both our evaluations and clinical team. This is your webinar. So we wanna make sure that you get all that you need from it. So please don't hesitate to uh, engage interactively with us by answering the polls and asking questions for a deeper understanding by using the Q&A button. So before we start, we actually have a poll to kind of start off uh, us off with. Uh, if this is uh, the, the poll question is, is this your first time attending the NHCI PCA webinar? Yes or no? We'll give it a couple seconds and then John let us know what it looks like. All right, responses are flying in. We probably just need maybe another 10 seconds since it's the first poll. There we go. All right, thank you, John. It looks like uh, 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 we're almost close, but it looks like 55%, uh, uh, it is their, um, uh, 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 their first opportunity to join us for the PCA. So thank you very much. Uh, let me introduce our first presenter, Masa Masato, uh, Senior Public Health Program Manager for the NECI based in Massachusetts who will revisit the NECI, our team, and territory. Masa, the floor is yours. 
Thank you so much, Phil, and good afternoon, everyone. Again, my name is Masa Masakoy, Senior Public Health Program Manager for the National Hypertension Control Initiative, and today I'll provide a brief overview of the NHCI program. And the National Hypertension Control Initiative is funded through the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, Office of Minority Health, and the Health Resources and Services Administration Bureau of Primary Health Care. Our overarching goal for this initiative is to improve the blood pressure control rates of 350 HRSA funded community health centers to 80% within a three year uh, program period. And the NHCI intends to accomplish our overall goal by utilizing a framework that consists of four key strategies, patient and public education, community outreach and integration, healthcare organization and clinician training, as well as project management and evaluation. And I'll share more details about each of these strategies on the next few slides. To execute our patient and public education strategy, we will launch a national co-branded PSA campaign focused on blood pressure awareness and education. We are looking to convene large scale virtual or in-person community events focusing on racial, racially and ethnic, ethnically diverse pop, populations who may be disproportionately impacted by high blood pressure. And we're developing outreach materials that promote proper self-measuring blood pressure techniques. Our community outreach strategies include recruiting and engaging community-based organizations on a local and national level. With these strategic alliances, our goal is to promote is to promote the importance of blood pressure management and identify some key signs and risk factors for hypertension. We will engage these partners uh, to increase uh, blood pressure screenings in each of these communities across the country. Additionally, we will develop culturally and linguistically appropriate resources and trainings to local uh, organizations for referral to our community health centers and other services. For our health care and clinician training component, we are engaging those 350 community health centers in targeted technical assistance to improve hypertension control rates through HA's longstanding quality improvement uh, programs such as Target BP. We are also supporting healthcare providers and with training and skill building strategies to embed blood pressure monitoring and treatment best practices into health centers. And for project management and evaluation, we will execute a robust data-driven evaluation, leveraging AHA's existing data platforms using mixed method uh, implementation research. And lastly, we are providing leadership and strategic direction to the uh, initiative in close collaboration with OMH, HRSA, and critical stakeholders, including the American Medical Association. Now I will introduce you to our team. Uh, you've met a few of us on a, the previous uh, webinar, uh, but again, Anikini Bithu is our public health director for the NHCI program. Anikini is responsible for providing overall oversight for the NHCI program uh, objectives and activities. She also works very closely with the AHA, the Office of Minority Health, and HRSA, uh, and all initiative collaborators and stakeholders. And you also heard from Phil Gipoko uh, during the beginning of today's webinar. Phil also serves as a senior public health program manager for health centers located in Illinois, Indiana, Indiana, Michigan, and Ohio. I am also a senior public health program manager serving Connecticut, Maine, Massachusetts, New York, New Jersey, Rhode Island, and Vermont. I am also pleased to announce we are fully staffed and would like to introduce you to a couple more of our public health program managers that you may not have met on the previous webinar. So Jacqueline Atkins is based in South Carolina and is working with health centers located in the Federated States of Micronesia and Palau. Leslie Brown is based in California and is working with 40 plus health centers in California. Uh, Indira Kate is based in Pennsylvania and is working with health centers located in DC, Delaware, Maryland, North Carolina, Pennsylvania, and Virginia. And we also have Susan Garrett based in Missouri, 
uh, and is working with health centers in Arkansas, Arkansas, Iowa, Kansas, Kentucky, Minnesota, Missouri, Nebraska, North Dakota, West Virginia, as well as Wisconsin. And on this next slide, you will find our final four public health program managers. Lillian Gutierrez Alvarez is based in Florida and is working with health centers located in Florida, Georgia, South Carolina, Puerto Rico, and the Virgin Islands. Tim McCray, based in Texas, is working with our health centers in Texas, as well as Oklahoma and New Mexico. You'll hear from Mark Mooney in a bit, uh, but he is based in Georgia and working with health centers in Alabama, Louisiana, Mississippi, as well as Tennessee. And last but not least, Amy Warrior is based in Idaho and is working with health centers in Alaska, Arizona, Colorado, Hawaii, uh, Idaho, Montana, Oregon, Utah, and the state of Washington. So please feel free to contact your respective public health program managers if you have any questions regarding the health centers in your region. And to wrap us up on this next slide uh, with the 350 community health centers, uh, this is a example of the distribution that we'll be serving with NHCI. We're gonna be working pretty closely to reduce blood pressure, uh, in, uh, blood pressure in these areas. Each of these states and territories, as I have mentioned previously, are assigned a public health program manager. And we're also working very closely with local AHA community impact teams and together we'll act as liaisons for health centers and community-based organizations within these states. So this is a very exciting initiative that complements the AHA's continued work with uh, blood pressure. And we're more than happy for everyone's efforts uh, to launch this project and supporting our communities to address uh, hypertension. Now I'll pass the mic back to Phil. Thank you, Masa. <clears throat> Our next presenter is Mr. Mark Mooney, Public Health Program Manager for the NECI based in Atlanta. Mark will discuss collaboration opportunities for our organizations. So Mark, let me hand it over to you. Thank you. Thank you, Phil. Thank you very much. <clears throat> and thank you all again for uh, being part of this uh, webinar, the uh, Primary Care Association webinar. So working together with you, our Primary Care Association, how can you get involved and assist us working with the health centers? What you see here is the foundation of, of this initiative. Uh, measuring accurately is the MAP framework. Measuring accurately, act rapidly, and partnering with patients. So the MAP framework comes out of a, a national initiative formed between the American Heart Association and the American Medical Association in response to the high prevalence of uncontrolled blood pressure. The MAP framework helps healthcare organizations, care teams to improve blood pressure rates through evidence-based quality improvement programs. This evidence-based framework you see here uh, guides health centers to assess and treat people with high blood pressure, follow, follow clinical best practices, and enable patient self-measurements where appropriate. Now, focusing on these three critical areas, measuring blood pressure accurately, act rapidly with clear treatment plan, and partnering with patients to enable ongoing self-management uh, could help patients, and, uh, patients get their blood pressure under control and keep it that way. The next slide here is what, what is what is the ecosystem for this initiative looks like. And this is connecting to a uh, clinic to community and patients to the clinic. And how we go about doing that on the next slide is through the series of, 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 of the health centers will receive the technical and training support through the national webinar series, which are one hour monthly webinars for health centers to learn more on understanding and applying the MAP framework, associated workshops, which are two hourly monthly uh, workshops to deeper dive into the MAP framework, applying practice tools and resources and for health centers to share best practices and lessons learned. The office hours are designed to reinforce the content from the webinars and workshops, allowing the health centers to ask specific questions and group troubleshooting. 
And lastly, the one-on-one -on -one technical support. This is an opportunity for the health centers to engage with their public health program managers and or an AHA liaison to work individually with their assigned health centers. This slide provides you with the topics and dates of the monthly webinars, workshops, and office hours that are highly recommended of the health centers. So we ask you, PCA, to strongly encourage your sites to participate in these workshops and webinars. This slide is important because this lays out what is required or highly recommended of the health centers. This is also, this can also be located on the HRSA website. Um, so the, how they are in, uh, what's required, excuse me, is to recruit and engage patients with uncontrolled hypertension, uh, patients with uncontrolled hypertension to take part of this initiative to participate fully in the training and technical activities, to ensure access to validated devices to promote self-measured blood pressure outside of the office setting, develop treatment plans based on the data, collect and share data to support evaluation and other reporting activities. And I can say this is also an important slide. <laughs> This diagram provides you with a visual of the NHCI training and technical support from both AHA and HRSA. On your left, you find the TA group one. These are the 350 health centers that AHA and HCI team will be working with. And these, these are the health centers who are required, again, to attend these monthly workshops, office hours and webinars and technical assistance. Group two on your right are the remaining 146 health centers that will receive technical assistance directly from HRSA, as you can see, the CDC, Million Hearts, et cetera. And this, and in the middle, the circle, this is, this is for all 496 health centers, giving them access to recorded webinars and other resources through both the AHA and HRSA website. And what you have here, this is another way how you, the PCA, can uh, support our work and be involved by subscribing to the NHCI newsletter. As you can see here, the purpose of the newsletter is to provide real life success stories, practice tools, edu uh, patient education materials, and more. And this newsletter comes out every three weeks. So we will provide you with the link to the uh, the email address to subscribe to this uh, to our newsletter. And on the next slide, these are webinars specifically for you, the primary care associations. Uh, as you can see, we've already had one. This is our second one. We have three more coming up in in 2022. And before you hear from our primary care, one of our primary care association on the next slide, please note the NHCI website here. And on this webpage, you will find further detailed information about this initiative. Additionally, you will find the links to many of our AHA hypertension resources. And now I am proud to introduce Dr. Sonia Fuqua, who is the Chief Clinical Service Officer at the Community Health Center Association of Mississippi. Dr. Fouquet, take it away, thank you. Thank you so much, Mark. Good afternoon, everyone. I am really just tickle pink to be with you for our presentation today. Thanks to Mark for the invitation and a shout out to Dr. Helen Beatty. Um, she is the American Heart Association Senior Community Impact Director that we work with here at our association. It is just really a joy for me to have the opportunity to highlight Mississippi during this webinar. Next slide, please. Just to tell you a little bit about who we are, we were established in 1981 originally 
Mississippi Primary Healthcare Association. We are currently celebrating 40 years in existence. Our mission is to support our members in their collaborative efforts, advocate for the provision of equal access to quality, comprehensive healthcare services, and for the elimination of health disparities in our state. Uh, we went through a rebranding process in 2019, and so we are now the Community Health Center Association of Mississippi. If you see here, our name now is more representative of our services. People would often ask when we were Mississippi Primary Healthcare Association, what do you all do? Well, now they can see that we work with community health centers across our state. We currently have 21 community health centers. They represent and serve um, approximately 190 sites and they are caring for over 285,000 patients. You can see on our map there where we are situated across the state of Mississippi. Mississippi has 82 counties and we do have a site in all but nine of them. Next slide, please. One thing we are particularly proud of here in Mississippi, and that is our community health center legacy. During, um, you know, when community health centers were first started, they were called neighborhood health centers. And the first ones were in Boston, Massachusetts, and in Mount Bayou, Mississippi. And we always quibble about which one was actually first since they were both started in 1965. But the one in Mount Bayou, which is Delta Health Center, actually opened their doors first. So we are proud to say we are one of the first neighborhood, neighborhood health centers, or shall we say community health centers. And you know that we have branched out all across the United States from those two that started way back in 1966. John, next slide, please. So let's talk about hypertension in Mississippi. Well, we are currently second in the nation in terms of our hypertension that is being uncontrolled at 43.6. All I can say is thank God for West Virginia. Their numbers is 43.8%. So we are currently second. As it relates to our community health centers, according to our 2020 Uniform Data Systems, or we affectionately call it UDS, our community health centers are reported 54.2% of their patients that have controlled blood pressure. Well, the Healthy People 2020 goal for hypertension control is 61.2%. And only eight of our health centers are currently exceeding that goal. I would like to note here that in our 2019 UDS numbers, our rates were higher. We were at 58%. We do recognize that the impact of COVID-19, which has impacted everything, did also impact our numbers. So our percentages decreased, unfortunately. But in looking at that, we recognize the opportunities that were inherent for us to, to work on that. So um, one of those is the participation in our national hypertension control program. So that's an opportunity as well. We did find that what was going on during the pandemic and in still some cases that people were self-reporting their blood pressures because they started doing more uh, telehealth and the healthcare provider or the medical assistant or nurse or what have you was not actually taking the blood pressure. We started using more ambulatory self-blood pressure monitors. And of course that is going to be widespread with our program participants here and we started being innovative in ways to get blood pressures. There were opportunities for patients in some of our clinics to actually have drive-through visits where they could get lab work done and get blood pressure done and what have you. But again, looking at our numbers and recognizing the issues that were surrounding our health centers, it was an opportunity for us to try to mitigate the barriers and maximize opportunities to improve blood pressure in Mississippi. 
Next slide. One of the ways that we engage our community health centers, um, you see a few of those here, our work groups, technical assistance and training, as well as programs and initiatives. As it relates to our work groups, we have several across the organization, but I'll reference the quality improvement work group as this one of the ones that's really under my purview. The quality improvement work group is comprised of representatives from most of our community health centers that come together for a mission of identifying clinical performance issues and supporting improved delivery of competent quality care through staff education and training. The representatives are providers. We have MDs, nurse practitioners, we have RNs. We even have those who work in corporate compliance and um, quality, even though they may not be actually a medical provider per se. As I just uh, discussed the need for improvement in hypertension, we use this forum for technical assistance training, open discussion, and networking. One of the things I really like about it is the opportunity to share seamlessly and still shamelessly. We look at issues around our different health centers. We look at those UDS numbers that I talked about. And those who are doing well will share with the rest of the group. And there's opportunity to see if what you're doing in your health center can translate to my health center? Do we have similar uh, infrastructure? Are we using the same electronic health record? So I might not need to reinvent the wheel in order to prove numbers in my health center. I may be, may be able to steal what you're doing at your health center. So they really have begun working together and networking outside this quality improvement uh, work group as well. They established those relationships, those with similar infrastructure, and um, you know, electronic health record as well. Technical assistance and training. We have our annual conference where we provide information as relates to all clinical measures. And uh, we have um, a spring and a fall clinical conference. Our clinical conference is actually coming up for the fall next Friday, which would be October the 8th. And then we have on-site or one-on-one -on -one, uh, technical assistance with individual health centers as is needed, as we identify, or if they come to us with they needed some specific technical assistance at their site, it may be in related relation to the electronic health record, uh, pulling data or workflow or what have you. So we provide that opportunity. And then we have uh, a plethora of programs and initiatives that we um, provide or liaise with our health centers for opportunities to improve. And since we're talking about hypertension, I will reference the American Heart Association. Uh, we actively participate with them. We have target BP, uh, check change control, cholesterol, check change control, diabetes initiatives. And I, I gave a shout out a little while ago for Dr. Helen Beatty. She works closely with our health centers with these programs and recently uh, sent out the gold certificates for health centers who had done well in those programs that I referenced. Another hypertension program that uh, some of our health centers are involved in is the IMPACTS study. That's I-M-P-A-C-T-S. And you know we love our acronyms, but I will tell you what IMPACTS stands for. It's a mouthful, so get ready. Implementation of multifaceted patient-centered treatment strategies for intensive blood pressure control. So again, we network with our community health centers and we receive these opportunities from uh, um, our partners, our strategic partners for our health centers to involved in these programs. And we are excited that we have many of them involved in the National Control for Hypertension Initiative. And then of course, we have patients in a medical home. We have our clinical quality measures programs such as childhood obesity, HIV, et cetera. Next slide, please. Now, as it relates to the National Hypertension Control Initiative, and you know, I flipped that back and forth, National Control Hypertension and National Hypertension Control, but you all know what I'm talking about. We have 45% of our community health centers that have been awarded 
uh, opportunity to appreciate this pro in this program, and we, we are really are excited about that. But we want to take the opportunity to leverage the technical assistance and training that the nine community health centers receive, and we wanted to spread it across all of our health centers. Uh, the quality improvement work group that I talked about earlier and our electronic health record user groups have met collaboratively for training as it relates to hypertension control. We are looking at opportunities for interfacing with the remote patient monitoring devices, and naturally that relates to the um, blood pressure monitors, self blood pressure monitors, how we can assure that we can get the information from the monitor to the electronic health record. We've had a couple of electronic health record vendors come and present to our group because we realize that just because we're taking the blood pressure and it might be Bluetooth activated or what have you, there may be work to be done with that vendor depending on who the EHR is so that that inf information can translate. We've also worked together as a group to establish remote patient monitoring policies. And something else that we're excited about in terms of our Mississippi PCA, and that is our partnership with the Mississippi State Department of Health. We work closely with them on a multiple endeavors. Uh, of course, really, really have grown to be bosom buddies with the COVID-19 and, and getting the vaccines out to our communities and health centers as well. But we also working with them and partnering um, we have actually established the Mississippi Community Health Workers Association. And our community health workers across the state are trained um, with a focus on chronic diseases. They are awarded certificates when they complete their training and have the opportunity for specialization and say hypertension. So the NHCI community health centers that have community health workers can integrate them into that multidisciplinary team and involve them in the program scope of work. So we are really excited about that. And then last but not least, um, I want to talk about leveraging the partnership with NHCI for training for all of our community health centers. I mentioned a couple of minutes ago about our fall clinical conference, which will be held virtually next Friday, October the 8th. And since we are getting to be such friends, uh, our public health manager, Mark Mooney, you know, he invited me here, so I invited him there. So he will be coming on board with our conference next week, and he is going to talk about the MAP framework for blood pressure control. And what's really exciting is that participants will be awarded CME or CE credit for coming to our conference. So that's going to benefit those participating in NCHI as program awardees, as well as our other community health centers as well. And then we will also have on our website opportunities for recordings of that presentation, as well as the public webinars that you all are providing. So we are really excited about being a part of the National Hypertension Control Initiative, having 45 of our percent of our health centers involved and the opportunity for the PCA to um, share, help engage our health centers, get the information provided to all of our health centers and, and just be a part of this initiative. So thank you so much, next slide please, for the opportunity to present on the webinar today. And I will be happy to answer any questions at the appointed time. Next slide. And this is how you can contact me if you would like to do so. Thank you so much. Dr. Fuquaz, thank you so very much. We have a Dr. Fuquaz email there available if you would like to inquire about the conference that's coming up or any of the information she presented. You can also reach out to the NHCI team and we'll make sure to provide that information to Dr. Fuquaz so you two can get connected. Again, thank you very much. If you need uh, Dr. Fuquaz information, it is on the screen right now. Uh, thank you, Dr. Fuquaz. Thank you, Mark. We have another interactive poll. I'm going to hand this over to John. And John, if you could lead our next poll for our attendees. I, I am. And if, if you'll allow me, I think um, 
The first poll was asked out of order. So I'm gonna ask, let's just do both polls again. They're both very short. Uh, this first poll we're launching right now is the, is this your first time attending a NHCI uh, PCA webinar? So if you could please answer that one first. Um, and that was my bad. Uh, I got them out of order, apologies. So we'll give a few moments to, uh, to get this one answered up. Good response rate coming in. All right, and so sharing that one. Phil, the numbers are a little bit different now that we have the right question in front of people. And then let's go ahead and go and capture the second poll. The second poll is, go ahead and if you want to, uh, tee up the question itself while we get it going. Absolutely. So uh, uh, let me take it. So obviously with our first poll about attending, we had uh, 63 attending that it is their first poll uh, that we had. So the second question, John, if you can see it, feel free to kind of share that with our attendees as well for our second question that we're revisiting. Mm -hmm. All right. Does your PCA host any form of clinical professional development? Just about there. Great response. Your feedback is so appreciated. And there are the results. John, thank you so much. Attendees, thank you very much for your response. Now, I'd like to introduce Nikisha Harrison, Senior Manager of Quality Systems Improvement Programs, Clinical Practice. Located at our National Center, she'll provide an update on our fully staffed clinical team. Nikisha. Thank you, Phil. I appreciate that. And thank you, uh, Mrs. Kukwa, for the information that you provided. Very insightful. Um, as he stated, I'm the Senior Manager for Quality Systems Improvement Program with our clinical practice team. Um, and I'm so glad to be with you. You can go on to the next slide, please. We do have a fully staffed team. We have here, Felicia Cardoso, who is also a quality programs manager, David Pena and Mrs. Sonia Contreras. We also have an additional member that we will be getting onboarded soon. I hand that back. Um, we're here to support the goal. Um, Ultimately, clinical practice facilitation team is to improve the blood pressure rate of the 350 hertz of funded community health centers from an average of 52.6 to 80% within three years. And we plan to do that through our training and technical assistance. Um, our core strategies build the capacity of our providers and our patients on blood pressure screening. We wanna make sure that they are doing that accurately. Um, we're using our SMVP model as they highlighted earlier and also the, the science of the MAP framework. Um, we wanna make sure also um, the patients are treated well, that they are self-monitoring and managed utilizing targeted resources and tools. We will also support healthcare providers with training and skills building strategies to embed blood pressure monitoring and treatment best practices in their clinics and with the community health centers. Thank you. Thank you, and Akisha, appreciate that. Uh, uh, earlier in Mark's presentation, you saw the calendar of 2021's uh, uh, clinical uh, webinars and workshops that we have. We'll be having the 2022 dates coming soon for you. So again, thank you, Nikisha. Excited to see your team there. And I know we have some new faces as well. I'd now like to introduce Dr. Lauren Painter, Senior Program Evaluation Anal Analyst with the National Hypertension Control Initiative based in North Carolina. So Dr. Painter, let me hand it over to you. Thanks, Phil. Hello, everybody. Uh, as Phil mentioned, I'm Lauren Painter. I am one of the senior evaluation analysts on the NHCI project. My role on the team is to evaluate the public health impact of our collaborative partnerships, as well as uh, evaluate the NHCI project as a whole. So on this slide here, you'll see that one of the tools we're using for our evaluation is our health center assessment survey. So the goal of this uh, assessment 
is to obtain some information related to existing center resources, as well as um, any needs they might have with a focus on identifying a center's ability to utilize SMPP data to help inform patient care and improve patient health outcomes. And so we're in the home stretch of data collection uh, with almost 90% of the NHCI health centers having completed this initial assessment. But we are, we're hoping that we might be able to get some help from uh, you all as the PCAs uh, to help um, encourage the remaining 39 centers to, to review and complete this assessment. Um, if you see the table on the right here of the slide, it shows the regional locations of the centers um, that we are still uh, tracking down to get this information. Um, and if we advance to the next slide, you're able to see here the corresponding states of these uh, centers. So if you feel like you might be able to help our team uh, support these centers in um, these states with completing the assessment, please reach out to Phil and Masa. Um, they'll make sure that you get connected with the right NHCI team member. Um, and with your help, we hope to increase our 90% completion to 100%. Um, and with that, I'd like to pass it back to Phil. Thanks. Thank you, Dr. Painter, uh, for providing an update on our very important health center assessment. Our, NAC pro our NHCI program uh, uh, team uh, managers will reach out to our PCA partners for support in those states where we have gaps in our assessment. I know we've covered a lot with you today, and I want to make sure that we leave time uh, for you to have a good understanding of the initiative and how we'll be moving forward together. So I'd like to ask our attendees to provide feedback, ask any questions you may have, share your thoughts or comments with our group. I'll ask our panelists to join us as we answer these questions. Please use the Q&A button and we'll uh, answer the questions as they come on in. And I'll ask uh, uh, Masa, Masa, if you see any questions when you get an opportunity, please feel free to share with us and we will do our best to answer. Absolutely. And we have a question from Yvette. Uh, could we explain the difference between the 146 health centers and the 350 health centers uh, that the AHA group will be working with? Thank you. Let me do this. We also have uh, um, uh, Ania Khan EB2, our program director uh, for the NECI uh, based in Maryland. Let me see if Anikan could also share our, our, a little bit of the differences between the 350 and the additional 146. Anikan, if you're on board, we'd love to uh, have you uh, share your thoughts and feedback for this question. Sure. Thank you so much, Phil, for that question. And just to speak a little bit about the 350 versus the 196. So there's a total of 496 health centers that receive funding for this National Hypertension Control Initiative. Out of that, the AHA will be working with 350 health centers that were provided to us through HRSA. And we were provided those 350 because they have the worst uncontrolled rates of hypertension. They are, uh, the average is at 52.6%. And the goal by the end of the three year will get that to 80%. So we did not select the 350 health centers that was what was provided to the American Heart Association to focus on. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Ben uh, Masa, the next question, if we have any in queue. So the next question that I have for the team, uh, this is directed towards the evaluation uh, team, is about that support for uh, requesting information from the 350. Could you further expand on what types of uh, outreach and communication uh, would you like to, would we like to uh, provide the PCAs as far as guidance and assistance on that uh, activity? Thanks, Masa. Um, I will uh, default to Phil on this. We encourage the PCAs to reach out um, to uh, Phil as um, sort of a liaison to help them get in touch with the um, program manager that is in uh, their, their area, their state, their region. 
Um, and if there's any additional details, um, any other questions, I'm happy to help with that. And Dr. Painter, let me also jump on in as well. Uh, to add to that, and I think this is very exciting for our primary care association partners, the goal right now for our uh, NHCI program team will be to reach out to all of our PCA partners by the end of October. So by the end of October, you will have seen and, and have an opportunity to sit down and have a virtual meeting with us to discuss the past two webinars that we've had, to discuss your priorities, and discuss working with the uh, HRSA funded sites in your state or in your region. So we're looking forward to be able to do that, and the NHCI staff will be uh, 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 reaching out and making contact to set up those meetings pretty much uh, starting next week. So please keep an eye on that. And from there, I think we can also talk about the sites that we can use your support, your guidance, and your help in trying to complete those assessments. So thank you very much for those that question. Uh, Masa, do we have any additional questions in the chat or the Q&A section for us? I do not see any additional questions at this time. Thank you, Masa. Thank you, panelists, uh, attendees. Thank you again for joining us. Uh, I wanted to share, save the date for our upcoming NHCI PCA webinars, and they're scheduled for Thursday, January 13th, 2022, Thursday, April 14th, 2022, and finally, Thursday, July 14th, 2022. Those uh, save the dates and those invitations will be going out uh, 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 three to two weeks prior to the to our, our scheduled time. So please keep an eye on that again. Thank you so much for joining us today. We Actually, hope you it found does look like one other question is coming from a vet. Okay, sounds pretty good. Uh, let me put on hold and uh, Amasa, would you mind kind of sharing that question, please? Absolutely. So Yvette asks, could other health centers not participating, uh, not a part of the NHCI 350 that we've identified, participate in those webinar trainings? That is a great question. Let me bring back Ania Khan and B2 to kind of share our, 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 our opportunities with that as well. Ania Khan. Thank you so much, Phil. And thank you, Yvette, for that question. So we do have, I think our team members shared that we do have the monthly webinars, the workshop, and also the office hour. The webinars and the recording for those webinars will be public information and it can be shared with the health centers. We also do um, periodically have COVID-19 um, webinar that is open to everyone. However, the workshops and also the office hours will be tailored to those 350 health centers that way we can track um, the data and report. Thank you. Thank you, Nia We appreciate that. Yvette, I hope that's answered your question as well. And before we move on, uh, give a chance for any additional questions or comments that you want to uh, share with us today. All right, well, we still have some room. If you have any questions, please feel free to share it in that. Thank you, Phil. Right. And I also you wanted to add, I wanted to quickly add that I placed the Community Health Center Hub link in the chat. So you can find some of those uh, webinars that Anika just uh, mentioned on this website. Thank you, Masa. Great resource. We have our website, we have our, our, our information, our chat that's available for every, all of our attendees today. And thank you so much for joining us. We hope you found value in this session and that it has met or exceeded your expectations. This webinar has been recorded and a copy of the webinar will be sent to the registered email to today's event. Please share with your team members participating in the NHCI. For more information about the National Hypertension Control Initiative and to contact your public health program managers in your state, contact us at nhci at heart.org or you can see um, our emails on the screen right now of your uh, public health program manager as well. And visit us at www.heart.org slash HBP control. Uh, if there's no other questions or comments, this concludes today's HCI Primary Care Association webinar. Thank you and have a wonderful rest of the day. Thank you. Just and just a reminder for folks, if you could share your feedback over maybe the next 30 seconds, there's a link in the chat box to follow.
sure appreciate, uh, we sure do appreciate your feedback. Have a great day. Thank you, John, and thank you for the feedback, everybody.